Denver Sports presents the Mile High Hockey Podcast with Mike Evans. Presented by Fort Comfort Gutters. Now here's your host with the latest on the burgundy and blue, Mike Evans. Hey everybody, welcome in as uh, we get set for the final week of the regular season coming off. Oof, bloody weekend, man. Bloody, bloody weekend. First of all, the Avalanche losing at home 7 nothing to Winnipeg. Then following up the game in Vegas where they build the 3-0 lead, blow it in the third period, end up losing in overtime. What are the takeaways from this lost weekend for the Avalanche? Well, I'm not pushing any panic buttons yet, okay? But I am concerned, and you have to be. You can't just blow off what has happened down the stretch as being no big deal, nothing to see here. I know that some folks have tried to equate the Avs coming down the stretch here with their Stanley Cup season as evidence that, hey, don't don't be too concerned. Look at what they did the year that they won the Cup. I uh, Big differences, big differences. First of all, that team had the second-best team in the NHL. They racked up 119 points. They were by far the top team in the Western Conference. And that last week, they slumped a little bit. But that was obvious that that was a team that was all locked in, ready to go, and just wanted the season to be over with and get on with the playoffs. And I think, if I remember correctly, they had a road trip there where they had to go up to, you know, Calgary, Vancouver, um, Edmonton, that kind of a trip. And it was just like, ugh, we don't want to. We just want to get this season over with. So this that that's different. That team was loaded, locked, loaded, ready to go for the playoffs. This is a team that isn't as locked and loaded and hasn't been as locked and loaded. Sure, since the trading deadline, they made some of the acquisitions, and they've looked good. I mean, they, they've looked good. But by no means is this team buttoned up like that team was. And so when you see some of the results that we've seen coming down the stretch here, I don't think they're as easy to blow off as you could a couple of years ago with the Stanley Cup team. Um, the loss to Edmonton, the loss to Dallas, and and then the loss to Winnipeg, it, it you just can't overlook it and say it's no big deal. It is a big deal, and it does reveal some of the red flags with this hockey team. Now, let me tell you where I'm at with this team right now, okay? This is a team that I think could easily go to the Western Conference Finals. This is a team that could easily lose in the first round of the playoffs. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if either scenario unfolded. It truly wouldn't. So what's the differences between a team that goes to the Conference Finals versus a team that maybe gets knocked out in the first round? Well, here's the undeniable strength of this team, okay? Okay. And it's something that we've talked about since the beginning of the season. To me, this is the best core in hockey. And so anytime, any series that you're able to roll out Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Miko Rantanen, Val Nachuskin, Devon Taves, that is a core I'll put up with anybody. Anybody. And trust me, no team in the NHL is saying, hey, bring on the avalanche. That's going to be an easy time. Of course not, because of that core that we're talking about. So because of those players, because you have the best defenseman, arguably, in hockey, because you're going to have the Hart Trophy winner, because you have in Miko Ranton and a guy who's easily, you know, one of the top 10 players in the NHL, top 15. And Val Nachuskin, you guy that's got a, a guy that's one of the top 20, 25 players in the NHL. In Devon Tage, you got a guy who's arguably one of the top 10 to 15 defensemen in the NHL. You put all those guys together, of course you have a shot. Then it becomes a matter of what kind of help do you get. And aren't we kind of right back full circle to the conversation that we had at the beginning of the year about the supporting cast? And about the goaltending. And so when, when I look at the Avs issues right now, I know a lot of you are pinning this all on Alexander, Alexander Georgiev. And I'm not, let, I'm not giving him a free pass by any means. He needs to be better. Jared Bednar himself has said, hey, we have made some mistakes 
We need to be better defensively. We need to be tighter. We need to be more disciplined. But at the end of the day, you still need to have your goaltender cover some warts. You still have to have your goaltender as your last line of defense covering up for some of those mistakes by just making the big save. And lately, Georgiev hasn't been doing that. And it's it's led to some understandable freaking out. How much freaking out to the point where you've legitimately got Denver, you got Avalanche hockey fans pointing to DU and the performance of Matt Davis in the Frozen Four and saying, go sign that guy immediately and put him between the pipes for the abs. That's not going to happen. But you do have the makings of a full-fledged goaltender controversy, which is what no coach wants going into the playoffs, but you you have it right now. And it says something when Georgiev got pulled in the Winnipeg game, Eustace Onanen goes in really with a chance to maybe grab control of the job. Instead, he struggles as well. Bednar after the game is saying, I really didn't like either one of my goaltenders. And he goes back to... Georgiev for the Vegas game. And I think we kind of saw where Georgiev's game is at right now, where they came out to start that game. They were good defensively. They were limiting chances, limiting shots. Georgiev was able to see a lot of pucks, made a couple of saves, got into a rhythm. Okay. His confidence starts to feel good, but you can just kind of see it with him. He gives up a goal and immediately the, 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 the facade that I guess he, whatever confident, confidence facade that he builds up it's very it's very fragile and it just feels like it can crack very quickly with this guy and so the abs got an issue you know they they got an issue uh when it comes to the goaltending my read on it is that going into the playoffs I think you give Georgiev the first shot at it why well because you go all season long with Georgiev set up as the guy and Onanen is the, the clear backup. Onanen understands his role. He's comfortable with his role. He's cool with his role. Georgiev, if all of a sudden you take this guy who's been the number one all year and you bench him for the playoffs, what happens if Onanen doesn't play well? At that point, you go back to Georgiev, what do you got left? Do you got a guy that's going to come out and it's going to be all mad and it's going to say, I'll show you Jared Bednar. I'll show you Avalanche and I'll show you that you were wrong to bench me and I'm going to go out and play lights out. Or are you going to get a guy whose confidence is so shattered at this point that if you turn to him, you got nothing. So for that reason alone, I would start with Georgiev, but oh, he's on a very slippery slope. He's on a very short leash. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's the way that they go with the playoffs. And and look, you know, the Avs did win a Stanley Cup a couple of years ago with substandard goaltending. It, that's just a fact. Um, if you look at the list of Stanley Cup champions down through the years, the Avalanche championship was done with some of the most average to below average goaltending of any Stanley Cup champion. That's just fact. So you can overcome it. You can. But then it comes back to, do you have the team to do so? And right now, it remains the biggest issue with this team. They they don't have an Az Kadri. They don't have a Gabe Landeskog. They just don't seem to be as, as strong around their core as that team was a couple of years ago. But now let's look at the bright side, okay? And this is why I could easily see the Avalanche in the, in the Western Conference Finals is because as long as you have that core and as long as your big boys, as long as your top guys are playing at an all-star level in the playoffs, you don't need a lot from your supporting cast. Now you're not really relying on your supporting cast. You're just asking for some contributions, just a little bit of help. Hey, Casey Middlestat, pop home a couple here or there. Ross Colton, knock one in here or there. Um, Sammy Gerrard, you know, power play goal. Get one through. Give me a goal. Give me just a little bit of help. That's one thing the Avs have going for them. Now, you get this core playing at a high level, and you get this supporting cast that we felt so good about after the trade deadline, and if they're all really playing well, hey, man, this team can win the Stanley Cup. But based on what we're seeing to this point, the the issues that are plaguing this hockey team, goaltending, just some some leaky, leaky play in their own end that's leading to some turnovers, 
and mistakes that are being converted on by the opposing teams, and still some inconsistent performances from your supporting cast. Basically, all the guys outside of your top top six. Um, and by the way, when I was talking about the core, I guess I, I still put an Arturi Lekin in there as well, okay? So if I'm talking about the Avs that I feel like I can rely upon come playoff time, you got McKinnon, you got Rantanen, you got Val, and you got Lekkinen up front among your forwards, and then you got McCarr, and you've got uh, you got Taves. Beyond that, a lot of question marks, and guys are going to have to step up and play well. Josh Manson, you can't be taking penalties that are leading to the um, last two goals that Vegas scores in 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 their four three win. You can't be taking those kind of penalties. So there's just there's a there's an uncertainty that I feel with this team right now that I didn't feel with the the team two years ago. Um, turns out last year, you know, last year I was riding the confidence of what they had done the year before, and I believe that they'd be able to uh, to cruise through the first round. Maybe not cruise, but I definitely thought they'd get past the first round against Seattle. Turned out they had a lot of issues. Val going AWOL, all of that. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm not going to be a, a runaway homer either. Um, there's a lot to like about this team. There's a lot of reasons to believe in this team. They're not going to be an easy out. And if they can get enough goaltending and enough contributions from their supporting cast, tighten some things up defensively, there's no reason why they can't be in the Western Conference Finals. But they got to be careful because, you know, we, we've seen enough coming down the stretch, losses to Edmonton, loss to Dallas, loss to um, Winnipeg, where things really got exposed. And the, the things that were exposed were really glaring. And it's not something that you can easily blow off. So there's there's things to be fixed. There's things to improve upon. They got a nice nucleus to build around and build upon. But there are some red flags out there. There are some issues with this hockey team that, as a fan, you got to be concerned about. You just have to be. Um, they have the talent. They have a lot of things in the plus column. But they also have some things that they really need to improve upon if they're a team that's going to contend for another Stanley Cup. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, final week's upon us. It's, look, it's going to be Winnipeg. It's likely going to be Winnipeg with home ice. The good news is, and it, and it says something, and it goes back to what I was talking about with the core of this hockey team and how much I respect them and how much they're respected out there in the hockey world, that the, the last time I checked that a, a prospective Avalanche Winnipeg playoff series with Winnipeg with home ice, the Avalanche are still considered a Vegas favorite. So not a huge favorite, but it's it's not a pick 'em. They're not an underdog. So the wise guys, and they're not usually wrong a lot when they, they set these lines, uh, the wise guys still think the Avalanche, even with some of the issues, even though they've struggled against Winnipeg, even though they may not have home ice, there's enough respect out there for the Avalanche that uh, as of right now, they're considered a favorite in a first-round series against Winnipeg. So we shall see. One more game left against Vancouver. Uh, we'll, uh, excuse me, against Edmonton. We'll see if the uh, Avalanche can uh, tighten things up, get a good performance. They'll have a few days of practice uh, before their next game. Hopefully that helps. Keep an eye on Gabe Landeskog, although I'm not counting on anything there, but you know, just keep an eye on that. But uh, we're getting ready for the playoffs. I think we're all excited about the playoffs. The long season it has been a long grind. I think the the the, play, the players, I think you as fans, you're ready for the playoffs. Let's get this thing going. I just wish that we could all feel a little bit more rock solid, confident in the team heading into the playoffs. We shall see. We'll see you again a little later in the week here on the Mile High Hockey Podcast. <laughs> 